Let's start the third topic for this session. In this third topic, we'll be starting the first modern approach of capital structure, that's the net income approach. Now, see, these people have viewpoints, various people have viewpoints and theories developed based on that. You can come with a theory of your own and we we'll leave a theory on you. So different people came with different approaches and theories and this is just their viewpoint. What do they feel about a particular situation? The net income approach actually was developed by Professor Duran. He said that capital structure decisions are relevant for the firm. We talk about the maximizing the value of the shareholders or maximizing the value of the firm or minimizing the cost of capital. Cost of cap well, whatever capital structure decisions are important and capital structure decisions leads to a change in your overall cost of capital and the value of the firm. So that income approach is very very clear capital structure decisions are important. Debt and equity both are important in your capital structure and how you use debt is important. See one thing good about debentures is that the cost of debentures is less than cost of equity. Second thing about debentures is that increases the value of the firm. You saw in the first topic in the first session how when you have more debentures it increases the value of the shareholders. So good thing about debentures. Bad thing about debentures increases your leverage increases your risk. Example of Sahara. So, if you see debentures like a double-edged sword, it is good, it is bad. Now, up to you how effectively you use debentures in your capital structure. We teach you everything. When you are working, when you are starting up your company, it's up to you how do you get it financed. Now, that's why net income approach says that same assumptions keep in mind before you start with any theory. Assume there are no taxes here. EBIT of the company will remain same. The only two sources to remain is one is debenture, other is equity. Similarly, cost of debenture is less than cost of equity, as we have known now. Because interest is remaining the same and interest which you pay to a debenture holder is always less than what you pay to an equity shareholder. Risk of the company will not change throughout the life of the company. Assumptions will remain the same, whatever we discussed in the before we start up. So let us see how do we do net income approach. So total value, now two things you need to keep in mind before you start up any theory. One is the value of the firm, second is the cost of capital. Because the ultimate aim of optimum capital structure is what? Value of the firm should increase, cost of capital should decrease. So keeping in mind the value and the cost, let us see how do we compute under net income approach. So how do we find the value under net income approach? The total value of the firm is what? Value of equity plus value of debentures, right? So let us start with the first part. And the first objective of net income optimum capital structure is value of the firm should be increased. So how do we find out value now? So value of equity plus value of debenture. Now, let us come to the first part. How do you find the value of equity? Let me take you back to unit one. Now, when you spoke about unit one, you saw cost of equity. What was cost of equity? Cost of equity was earnings or dividend dividend based on what model you studied earnings model you studied dividend model so earnings or dividend divided by the value of equity that is how you found cost of equity if i say cost of equity is earnings or dividend divided by value can you find the value now let's cross multiply so value of equity will be what earnings divided by cost of equity cross multiply the formula similarly how will you find the value of debenture you said cost of debenture is what interest divided by the value of debenture that's what you saw before in cost of debenture now when you want to find this value of debenture how will you find it cross multiply interest divided by cost of debenture you get the value of debenture so one thing is clear how do you find the value of the company second thing we need to find out is the cost of capital so cost of capital you can do any formula you can go to the previous formula how do you do it in, co in cost of capital which you studied in unit one proportion into amount you can do that and add up or you can use a formula over here so value of a company which you have used just now you can use the same to find out cost of capital cost of capital is what ebit divided by value of a company Anyways, you find out value, why not you do to find out cost of capital? See, either you use a formula or you go to the primitive method, how do you do find out cost of capital? It's a proportion into amount, you get the same answer. I'm suggesting a shortcut because anyways, you'll find the value, why not use it? So value of the company is what? Use it over here in cost of capital. So cost of capital will be EBIT divided by value. As cost is always in percentage, multiply by 100 at the end. Two things keep in mind you do any theory. You need to concentrate on value. You need to concentrate on cost of capital because it is the ultimate objective of optimum capital structure. Now keeping this in mind, let us do a small illustration and see how do we do it. In this illustration, you have to focus on the same. So do net income approach. In this illustration, keep in mind the assumptions of capital structure do not change. Assume there are no taxes. There are only two sources, debenture and equity. 
EBIT will remain the same. Similarly, how do you find the value under net income approach will be value of the firm will be value of equity plus value of debenture and how do you find cost of capital will be EBIT divided by value. Keeping a concept strong, let us do this illustration. Now, company expects a net income of rupees 1 lakh. It has 2,50,000 debentures. Equity capitalization rate for the company is 10%. Calculate the value of the firm and the overall capitalization rate according to net income approach. Now, keeping this illustration, let us do how do we find the value and cost according to net income approach. Let's start with the value first. For value of the firm, we need two things. We need value of equity and value of debenture. Let us see what all is given to us in illustration. Illustration we are given to company expects a net income of 1 lakh. What do you mean by net income? EBIT. So one thing we know EBIT is given to us as 1 lakh. Then let's say 2 lakh 50,000 8 percent debentures. 2 lakh 50,000 is the value of debenture. 8 percent is the interest rate. Equity capitalization rate is 10 percent. So cost of equity is given to you as 10 percent. Now keeping these three things which are given to you, let us see how do you find the value of the firm. Value of the firm is value of equity and value of debenture, right? Now, we need two things over. We need to find the value of equity and value of debenture. If you see value of debenture is already given to us is 2,50,000. Next thing we need to find out is the value of equity, right? Now, how do we find the value of equity is keeping the cost of equity formula correct. How do you find cost of equity? Earnings divided by value. Right? Now cross multiply. If you need to find the value, how do you do? Earnings divided by cost of equity. If you see earnings is given to you as 1 lakh, right? Now, which earnings am I talking about over here? I'm talking about earnings available to shareholders. So keep the table handy. EBIT minus interest is PBT. PBT minus tax is PAT. PAT minus preference dividend is earnings to shareholder. If EBIT is given to me as 1 lakh, interest to shareholder. Interest to debenture holder will be how much? 2,50,000 into 8% which you get is 20,000, right? So interest will be how much? 20,000. So PBT will be how much? 1 lakh minus 20,000 which you get as 80,000, right? So EBIT minus interest gives you PBT of how much? 80,000. Similarly, assume there are no taxes, assumptions remain the same. So PAT will also be 80,000. Assume there are no preference shareholders. There are only two sources, one owned capital, one borrowed capital that is equity and debentures. So preference dividend is zero. Earnings available to shareholders will be how much? 80,000. Right? Now, how do we find cost of equity? Earnings available to shareholders divided by value of a company. If cost of equity is 10%, earnings to shareholders 80,000. Can you find the value? Yes, cross multiply. 80,000 divided by 10% will give you 8 lakh as value of equity. If value of equity is 8 lakh, value of debenture is 2 lakh 50,000. How much total value of the firm? 10 lakh 50,000. Right? Now, if you got the value of the firm as 10 lakh 50,000, let us see how do you find out as the cost of capital. Cost of the capital, how do you do? EBIT divided by value. Right? Now, EBIT, anyways, we have is 1 lakh. Value of the company we found out is 10 lakh 50,000. So, 1 lakh divided by 10 lakh 50,000 to 100, if you do, how much you get? You get cost of capital as 9.52%. So, you can see this illustration, we found two things, we found the value of the firm, we found out the cost of capital. Value of the firm we found out is 10,50,000 and cost of the capital we found out is 9.52%. Whatever you do, keep in mind the value of the firm should increase and cost should decrease. This is how you do net income approach, focusing on the concept strong. So when you have plans to compare, focus on the same and see when you are comparing different plans, in which plan value becomes the highest and cost becomes the less. And that's how we do net income approach.